Hi everybody, let's in this video look at regulation to solve market failure. We'll start with the definition of regulation. It's a rule or law enacted by the government that must be followed by economic agents to encourage a change in their behaviour. We say that regulation is a non-market based approach to solving market failure. It doesn't work through a market, it doesn't work through the price mechanism in changing price and then changing quantity, like indirect taxes and subsidies do doesn't work like that. For that reason, we, draw, we don't draw a diagram. For that reason, regulation doesn't have the same problems as indirect taxes and subsidies, namely the dependence on price elasticity of demand. That doesn't apply here. Non-market-based approach to solving market failure. It's a command and control approach. This is fundamental. Both elements are really significant if regulation is going to work in solving a market failure. Now, market failure can be anything. It could be a market failure where there is an underconsumption and underproduction. It could be a market failure where there is an overconsumption, overproduction. Regulations can work in solving those, all those kind of market failures. And here are the commands. Let's focus on that. The command are the rules or the laws, right? And if we group them up, these commands could be bans, like the public smoking ban uh, that we see in the UK and in many other countries around the world. It could be limits, like age limits on buying cigarettes and alcohol. Uh, it could be time limits on when alcohol can be served in a country. Some countries have time limits on that. It could be caps, like emissions caps for firms. It could be caps in terms of uh, the number of fish that fishermen can take out of the sea at any one time. We could have compulsory regulations, like uh, compulsory graphic imagery on cigarette packets, uh, compulsory vaccination, some countries are talking about that. It could be more innovative regulations, like in the UK we're talking about this deposit recycling scheme where well, we pay a little bit extra when we buy a plastic bottle or uh, aluminium can and we only get that extra money back if we recycle it. Uh, we can also look at something called Beijing road space rationing policies, innovative regulations to take cars off the road before the 2008 Beijing Olympics. You can research those policies and see how innovative they were there. But there needs to be control here. If there isn't the control aspect of regulation, it won't work. So control needs to be strong in two ways. There needs to be strong enforcement of the regulation. Otherwise, nobody will follow it. There is no incentive knowing that no one's going to check them. And there's got to be effective punishment, whether that's fines, whether that's uh, you know, bad publicity if you're a firm, uh, whether it's maybe a jail term, uh, whether it's you're banned from being able to consume something, whatever. There's got to be a strong punishment to make sure there is an incentive to follow it. If the punishment is weak, then people will just not follow the law and accept the weak consequences of it. So effective enforcement and punishment. Control has got to be strong, as well as a strong command here. The incentive, if both the command and the control is strong, the incentive is for economic agents to change their behaviour, either to consume more or to produce more, or to consume less or produce less. That's the idea here. The incentive to change behaviour, to move quantity towards the socially optimum level, the solving issues in the free market without working through the free market. Very, very interesting idea here. The end result, we get allocative efficiency and we get a welfare gain. We get welfare maximized in the market here. The non-market based approach is still trying to get to Q star in the market. But there are some significant issues with using regulation. Let's isolate command and control. If any one of these two things break down, the regulation is not going to work. Let's focus on the control aspect first. Regulation is costly. It's very costly. Not many people would say that first, but hey, it's very costly in two ways. There is an administration cost with regulation. Drawing up the regulation, enacting the regulation is costly, but especially with enforcement of the regulation. That's very expensive. Regulation needs policing, doesn't it? It needs people going out there and monitoring whether people are abiding by the regulation. There is a big cost there. What we can say is if that cost can't be afforded by the government right now, the regulation is going to be very poor because enforcement just won't exist at all here. So you can always bring in cost uh, in that regard, talking about the enforcement of the policy and whether it can be afforded. Now we we'll look at the command. Is the command going to be set right? Is it going to be set at the right level, at the right kind of strictness to make sure that there is an incentive to change behaviour here? Well, what if it's not? What if it's set too strict or too lax? If it's set too strict, there could be many unintended consequences of regulation, especially burdening firms, right? Maybe increasing costs significantly for firms. Uh, maybe it reduces profitability so much uh, certain regulations that firms leave the country and uh, operate elsewhere where regulations are not so strict. Maybe they reduce production and therefore there's unemployment. Maybe they shut down completely. That's not the intention here. If regulations are very strict on consumers, they may look for alternative uh, modes of supply here and thus maybe go to the black market or maybe they smuggle. That's dangerous for consumers. 
That means a loss of tax revenue for the government. That means more policing necessary for the government, increasing the cost even further. Big government failures of all of those unintended consequences. Another clever unintended consequence, if you set regulation too strict, firms will try and game the system, find ways to cheat the regulation uh, and therefore not follow it, and therefore again we see a government failure right there. If the regulation is set too lax, and again there isn't going to be that incentive to follow it necessarily, it's not going to uh, necessarily change behaviour enough to solve the market failure. So bear that in mind too. We've already talked about the unintended consequences and the notion of black market. Even if the regulation isn't set too strict, there is a very strong likelihood of consumers finding alternative supplies and maybe businesses uh, thinking that the regulation is, is too much. It's too much of a, an impact on their profitability, on their production, that they leave the country, they produce less, and they shut down. We can also look at the impact on equity here, uh, especially when we look at pollution caps. Uh, in particular, and how unfair it might be on some firms. And it might not be their fault that it's very difficult for them to reduce pollution, but it might just be very difficult for them and therefore very unfair to impose such a cap on them. Maybe just throughout history, um, they have developed quite um, fossil fuel dependent production, let's say, whereas maybe more newer firms have developed more kind of environmentally friendly ways of producing. If there are pollution caps that are a blanket the same for all firms, it might be very unfair on some firms who find it very difficult compared to others who find it much easier. In which case maybe a tradable pollution permit scheme is more appropriate here so that firms have a choice, so that there is more equity here with how the policy works. So that's a nice option. And we can see just throughout these cons how likely government failure is. The risk of government failure with regulation is very, very strong here. Uh, there is one more issue. We can say regulation is very paternalistic. It's very kind of dominating by the government, very forceful, the most forceful kind of policy. So like we talked about with indirect tax, if we're concerned about the paternalistic nature here, the, um, the lack of freedom, choice and, and liberty uh, as a result of regulation, taking away those massive benefits of the market, that's a nice argument you could use, especially if we argue that the market failure itself isn't that significant. That argument carries significant weight and a good reason maybe not to use regulation and to use other policies instead. So that covers regulation guys, thank you so much for watching, hopefully you can smash an essay on this now, I'll see you all in the next video.